Hey guys, it's Zach Yag here, and today I want to share my experience of how I of how I built a gaming PC. Recently, I decided to make a very special gift for my little sister. I wanted to give her a gaming PC. Of course, there are two approaches. The first one is to buy a pre-built PC, and the second one is to buy is to buy all the components and build it yourself. I knew what these components are and what they do, but I've never built a PC out of them. By the way, on my channel, if you remember, I took apart a laptop. Remember that video? If you don't, then I really encourage you to watch it. Because in that video, when I took apart the laptop, I explained about the key concepts about all and all, about all the parts. Why would you even want to build it by yourself if you can already purchase a pre-built one made by professional? First, it is fun. It is a more complex way, and it's a way to learn something. And second, you know what? I don't need a second reason when it's fun and I can learn something new. If you Google something like pre-built PC versus building one, then you're going to find hundreds of articles and thousands of opinions about it. Pros and cons and blah, blah, blah. If we can learn about one of the main tools we use almost every day, there are no doubts that this is a huge reason to do it. So today I'll share with you my own and my very first experience. Where I started, what I learned, and some very helpful sources that can help you build your own PC. I'm not gonna promote here any companies or components. And I promise that after this video, you will be more confident and ready to build your own gaming PC, if you want to, of course. What is the purpose of this video? I don't wanna record another video with very detailed steps to how to build a PC with the exact components. There are many videos like that. I wanna make this video a little different. And this will be more about my experience. And the purpose of this video is to answer the questions. Can a 10 year old kid build a gaming PC by himself? Where to start? What guides to use? What to read and where to pay attention? Okay, so now let's start. What tools do you need? Screwdrivers, an anti-static bracelet. Let me explain this to you a little bit more. As you might know, electronic components might be very sta very sensitive to static electricity. Sometimes, even when you just simply touch your component, it could be very harmful for it. So I recommend you to have this little tool that's called an anti-static bracelet. And do not ever build your PC on the carpet, since carpet can generate the static charge. And of course, the most important, you need the components themselves. But actually, you don't need to buy all the components at one time. You can purchase them one by one by one and build them step by step. Well, of course, if you're not in a rush to build it. What components do you purchase? One very important thing is the compatibility of all your components. The very first decision you would need to make is your processor. Then you need to select a motherboard that is compatible with this processor. And here, I'd like to suggest you to start using this website. This is not an ad or promo. I, was, I just found this website between many others when I was preparing for this video and to build my PC. You can see what components are compatible based on your selection. You can see their ratings, reviews from other people, availability, and prices. You can even select a prepared configuration that's within your budget. We're only gonna start off with the processor and the motherboard. Also, I already have my power supply, so I'm gonna open it and plug it in. Let me tell you why. into the power outlet but keep this off. I'm wearing a anti-static bracelet and I'm just going to attach it to the metal part of the power supply. Now my computer components will be safe from static electricity in my body when I work with them.
is so cool. So the two very first things you're gonna need to build your computer is the motherboard and the CPU or processor. I read that it's easier to first connect the processor before putting your motherboard into the case. This is the processor. So let's try to install it. So first we're gonna lift this part up and the processor has to be put in very lightly. Do not put any pressure on it. And remember, you have to put it in with no pressure whatsoever. After that, we're gonna put this down. That's it, your processor is installed and your very first step is done. But that's not all it for the processor. My processor does not come with a cooling system, so I bought it separately. Let's put it in. By the way, this is really heavy. I did not expect it to be that big. to learn how to put the cooler onto the processor. Now, the instructions, they had a lot of different ways to put it onto different different motherboards and processors like, like, like Intel or AMD. There are many different parts that you need to use to assemble it, but I found out that this is the part that I need for my motherboard and processor. Now, the rest, all of this, I'm not going to use. This is for other types of motherboards and processors. So remember, this is very important. Before, before attaching the cooler to your processor or motherboard, you need to put thermal paste onto the processor. With the cooler, there, there was a thermal paste included, but hopefully this one it works a little better. Okay, so I'm going to spread this thermal paste around the processor. So now I'm going to put the cooler right in, right on the processor. Okay, so right now I just put on this, which basically just secures the cooler onto the processor. Guys, this is very important. This is, I recommend you to keep it. It is the guide for your motherboard. Uh, you should remember some of the inputs, the outputs, and the components for later on. I recommend you, when you're building your computer, you should read this guide while doing it. And this is what I do after I've installed the cooler. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and install my RAM. Okay, so I have four slots for RAM, but I and I have two sticks. So I don't, I don't know if I should put the RAM in every other slot or just together. I'm not reading the instructions. So starting from the processor, this is B1, slot B2, slot A1, and slot A2. So in the, in the guidebook for the motherboard, it says that it's recommended that to put it in B1 and A1 if you have only two sticks of RAM. So let's do that. Guys, I'm so excited. We're getting closer and closer to completing the whole computer. Now we're already moving on to the case. I really like this case. It's clear on this side and it's white. I hope my sister likes it. Anyway, the time has come to put our motherboard and everything we've attached to it into the case. For this, let's open this side. There we go.
Okay, okay, so I both both of these sides I've taken apart, taken off, and let's turn it around so it's easier to assemble. So right here in the case, there are like these little sticks where you attach screws once your motherboard is put on them, so your motherboard is secure on the case. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Okay, so you're gonna do it very carefully. I'm gonna hold the cooler and it should be attached where the outlet is. So mine is right here. So that means right, the outlet should be facing right here. So I've taken a break. I've read a little bit in the instruction manual for the motherboard and learned a little more. Now it's time to install your SSD or hard drive into the computer. I wonder where to put it. Let me check the manual. Okay, I can't find it here. Maybe it's in the Oh, there you go, I found it. SSD drive Okay, now let's find out what cables to connect to it. I'm gonna, I'm going to look for it in the motherboard, uh, in the motherboard guy. Okay, so I've connected the first cable, but there's still a second input here. I'm pretty sure it's most likely for the power. Okay, so there's a lot of these input or outputs. I don't know, I honestly don't know what they are. I think it's depending on like where your, where, how far your power supply, oh, how far away your power supply is, but I don't know for sure. Okay, let's try connecting the power supply right now and connecting all the cables. Okay, so there's, there's inputs for CPU, VGA, PCIe, SATA, CPU again, MB, but ours is SATA, so let's connect it. There we go. Okay, now let's connect all this. Okay, so we have all these cables. It's very kind of confusing. Here it says like CPU and PSU and PSU. To understand this, I recommend you to read the instruction guide for the power supply and for the motherboard. So I just understood why there's all, all of these on the SATA cable. Because like, for example, my computer has a lead strip and this this you need to connect it to over here so then it actually works from the power supply unit and another connector on the same cord needs to be connected to your ssd or hard drive because that's literally the the power supply unit is literally what gives the power for uh your your ssd So we're done with the with putting the power supply in the case and here's where the SSD is connected and after this we need to connect all these cables to the motherboard 
Guys, remember, read the instruction manuals and the booklets because I just learned that you need to install the PSU with the fan facing down. And I installed it with the fan facing up, which could cause damage to the computer. So now I have to unscrew it. Okay, so I've connected all the cables we need to connect. And now's the awesome part. It's time to connect the graphics card. Okay, so we've done everything with the hardware. You know, we've connected the cables, the graphics card, the CPU, the fan, and all of that. Uh, I haven't tried put, turning the computer on or connecting it or installing any software or something like that, but I hope everything works. Okay, so all we have to do right now, let's just close the panel right here and then let's turn it on and see if it works. Okay, so I haven't turned it on or tried yet, but I really hope this works. Let's connect this to the plug, the outlet, sorry, and this over here. Okay, now let's put this in. Uh, I don't see anything working, but the green light turned on right here. Uh, I guess let's try putting, clicking this button. I think this should be the power button. This is awesome. I can't believe it. It's finally working. Since everything is on, now we just have to install the software and put it on, connect this to a monitor. I just connected the monitor to the computer. It showed, it automatically turned on to this screen once I connected it. I don't even have a mouse and a keyboard yet, so I can't even move the cursor around. You guys can't believe how happy I am. Like, this is my first time building a computer and it actually worked. I, I, I really, I'm just so excited. And while building it and all of this, uh, I've been starting to kind of think that it's mine. But remember, as I said in the beginning of the video, this was a gift for my sister. While my sister is enjoying her new gaming PC, let's make an analysis. First, is it possible for a 10 year old kid to build a PC? The answer is definitely yes, but I would recommend you to have an adult around, maybe to hold something for you, you know, to unscrew or screw something and things like that. But if you feel confident, you can do it completely by yourself. Second, what special knowledge do you need for this? I wanna say all that you need is something like this website to see if your components that you chose are compatible. And I don't, I don't think you need any special knowledge except for the general knowledge of PC components. How much time does it take? For me, it took about three evenings, each of them maybe one or two hours. And most of this time I spent for reading the instructions for the motherboard, the case, and the power supply. Putting the components together is not difficult once you know what to connect and where. Guys, I hope this video will help you learn more about a PC to build your own PC and be proud of yourself. Thanks for watching Zach Uath. I wanna go play online some online games with my sister. See you. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Zach Uath, hit the like button if you liked the video, and see you soon.